Welcome to Focus on Abilities, a program about issues affecting the lives of people with disabilities. I'm Lex Frieden. I'll be your host for today's program. I'm professor at the University of Texas Health Science Center in Houston and also at Baylor College of Medicine. I'm also the director of the Independent Living Research Utilization Program, ILRU, at Tier Memorial Hermann. We have a wonderful show for you today and I'm going to introduce our guests. But first I want to ask you a question, uh, one that we'll answer before the end of today's program. That is, who was the chief United States Senate sponsor of the Americans with Disabilities Act? The chief sponsor of the, of the US Senate of the Americans with Disabilities Act. We'll answer that question before the end of today's program. Now we're gonna take a short break before we introduce our guests. Please stay tuned. Thank you all for joining us on Focus on Abilities today. I'm your host, Lex Frieden, and we have three very special guests uh, who we'll be visiting with during the course of today's program. Let me introduce them to you first. Uh, Wee Young Tam is a student at Rice University. Wee Young, welcome to Focus on Abilities. And uh, Daphne McGee from Baylor University in Waco. Daphne, thanks for being here today. And uh, finally, Dr. Edward Elms, Dr. Elms is a postdoctoral fellow at the University of Texas Health Science Center and uh, a physician from Canada, I guess from uh, Newfoundland, is that correct? Okay, uh, we Young, you're uh, studying at Rice. What, what are your uh, principal uh, interests of study there? Well, I'm majoring in economics at Rice and I'm actually hoping to go to graduate school in economics. I'm mainly interested in how economics affects people. So the social part of it really interests me. Things like health, and labor, and behavior. What year are you in school right now? I'm gonna be a junior this fall. And you live on campus? At yes, I will. Rice. Yep, I will be living on campus. Is it a comfortable place to be? Uh, it's great. It's you wonderful. like Houston okay? Houston is nice. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, come back and ask you some more about that after a while. Uh, Daphne, you're at, at Baylor, and what are you studying there? I'm studying community health as well as sociology, and I'm also pre-law. And uh, you're in your senior year now? Yes, yes, I'm a senior. At, at uh, Baylor, it seems to us here in Houston like it's uh, a ways up in Central Texas. And I've been there before. It's a smaller community than, than Houston. Is it a comfortable place to be as a student? I like it. I love, I feel like uh, we have kind of our own close-knit community at, at Baylor. I guess they kind of call us the Baylor bubble. So, you know, we, we surround ourselves with one another, but also we like to branch out into the, to the Waco community as well. Mm -hmm. And the, the, Waco is not a particularly urban community. I mean, it's a, on the edge of the country. I think we think about it sometimes. Do, yeah. do, do you take advantage of that environment? Um, I mean, I, I do like the big city, so I mean, I've lived in Dallas and now Houston, so I do like the big city, but, you know, being in a small town is convenient sometimes, you know, when you need to get things done, you can do it pretty quick, so, you know, I kind of like both. Now, Edward, you've been in Houston for a while. Uh, you're from Canada, but you've had, uh, you took medical school in, a, in another country, correct? Yes, that's correct. I, um, I went to medical school at St. George's University. Uh, the first two years of basic medical sciences in the Caribbean. Um, it was in Grenada and St. Vincent. And uh, I really enjoyed it. Uh, the first month I was there, uh, we actually had a Category 4 hurricane hit the island. So um, it wasn't uh, a very pleasant first month, but otherwise I really enjoyed my time. I guess people think of the Caribbean as being kind of a vacation spot. At if you're a medical student there, did, did you have, uh, were you challenged by the desire to be out on the beach with your feet up and, and kicking back? Yes, yes, you're, you're totally right. Um, we could take our books occasionally to the beach, but uh, it was, yeah, it was a pretty intense program. So, yeah, we did kind of have a different perspective about the Caribbean after a few months. How many students were on the campus there? Uh, when I attended, I think the school has grown. Uh, when I attended, there was probably 
roughly a thousand, maybe twelve hundred. It's also mm. a big veter veterinarian school as well. Mm. And after you left there, you finished two years. You went to New York. Yes, yes, I did my clinical rotations in Brooklyn, New York, uh, most of them, and and uh, I did one in Manhattan and a couple in Toronto, Canada. What's that amount to? A, a clinical rotation. What is that? It's basically. Uh, in third and fourth year medical school, in third year in particular, you're required to do um, some core rotations like general surgery, internal medicine, obstetrics. Um, so we had those for uh, third year in Brooklyn. And then fourth year is more like where you can do electives. You can choose to do different specialties or whatnot. So you have some uh, freedom there as to what you can choose. Now, you've had some personal experience with disability, I guess, as a child you had a, a condition that required you to have a lot of interaction with the medical community did that influence your career at any do you believe uh, yes it did yes uh, since infancy I've been under the care of a, uh, a pediatrician an endocrinologist as well as an orthopedic uh, pediatrician um, so I've always I've always uh, had quite a I guess a extensive uh, uh, interaction with with healthcare professionals and particularly um, just as I graduated from high school I had a number of orthopedic surgeries which really piqued my interest in uh, medicine and rehabilitation medicine in particular I don't think that's typical I mean it seems to me that most people who have a uh, an encounter and particularly one as significant and long-lasting as you've had with the medical community values the opportunity to get away from it and not be drawn more closely to it but you've taken that as a challenge and and becoming a physician and now actually trying to uh, look at opportunities for specialization that's had a, a profound impact on your life yes well initially I did sort of want to distance myself from medicine because I had 12 orthopedic surgeries I spent many many months as an inpatient in hospital and I knew all too well the pains and frustrations of uh, being in the hospital for any extended period of time. However, once I got through a lot of my re rehabilitation and I started to reap all the benefits of that uh, medical care, that's when my opinion just went 180 degrees and I really uh, wanted to be a, play a role and uh, participate in, in helping other people. Now, a lot of the care you received was in a kind of a specialty environment. You couldn't, couldn't get that care in your hometown, even in your home province. Uh, you had to go to Boston, as I recall, f from our earlier conversation. That uh, perhaps uh, has interested you in finding a specialty that you can, can uh, develop expertise in? Yes, that's correct. Uh, the type of surgery I had done is, at the time was only done by a handful of surgeons uh, in North America so it was very specialized and um, it really kind of piqued my interest I think in in uh, rehabilitative medicine because it was so oriented to to uh, I guess you know the physical uh, health of the individual. Now that you're working as a postdoc at uh, at the University of Texas Health Science Center in Houston you're working with us on disability related issues um, but you also intend to go back and and uh, do another clinical specialization is that correct yes that's correct yes uh, my time here in Houston I've it's been a wonderful opportunity to be exposed to uh, um, not only I guess the the clinical aspects of rehabilitative medicine but also a lot of the advocacy and administrative and quality related issues that also play such an important part in, in this field of medicine. So the Texas Medical Center, I know it's one of the, the best in the world and it certainly has, has given me a lot of opportunity just in the short time I've been here so oh, far. We'll visit about that later. Daphne, uh, you and we Young are involved in a program this summer sponsored by CPRIT. Can you tell us what CPRIT is and what the program's all about? Yeah, well, CPRIT stands for the Cancer Prevention and Research Institute of Texas, and it is pretty much a grant, a huge grant, about $10 million, I believe, that the Texas taxpayers voted for a couple of years ago, and so now that's kind of bringing a lot of 
really big wigs in the cancer community and students. It's really um, pretty much an incentive for people to study about cancer research and try to uh, come up with some new cancer prevention techniques and also use innovation uh, as a tool in that as well. So y you all are in involved in a more or less scholarship program uh, uh, and uh, you had to compete to, to win a summer uh, scholarship? Well, there was an application process, and apparently they got a lot more applications than they expected, but I think maybe about 400 students applied, and they ended up narrowing it down to about 20 uh, that would be able to participate, and they have branches here at UT Health Science Center. There are some students, and then at El Paso and Austin and Brownsville as well, there are students in the CPRIT program. What made you interested in the program, just the fact you could have your summer sponsored at the Texas Medical Center, or were there other motivating factors? Well, th that was definitely motivation. You know, uh, paid internships are few and far between for college students, but being a community health major, I'm always looking for opportunities to get involved um, in the community and learn, about more, learn more about public health. And so, actually, Baylor's Career Services Department sent us an email about this opportunity, and so, I jumped right on it, and I'm really glad I was able to participate. We'll talk about what you did this summer. We young, you're a, a student at Rice, and you were also inspired to apply for this summer internship. What motivated you? Well, I didn't really know too much about public health when I applied, but the uh, the the year before, the academic year before I applied, um, I had been working with another professor, uh, Dr. Brody at the Baylor College of Med Medicine uh, about issues related to AIDS and pharmaceuticals. So I was actually getting more and more interested in health and I saw this opportunity and I thought, you know, since I don't really know too much, this would be a great uh, chance to learn more. And that's why I applied. And a as an economist or a, a student of economics, do you now see the opportunity for applying that specialty that uh, discipline to healthcare. I mean, definitely, there's there's a lot that economics can uh, do for healthcare. I mean, it's not just in terms of costs and uh, it's not just of costs and expenditures. Uh, there's a lot to think about about how people uh, respond in terms of incentives, and that's a big issue now with, with insurance and everything. Well, that is interesting because I think when the public hears about, when we listen to the media and we listen to the politicians and so on, we have the impression that the role of the economists in all of this is to tell us how much it's going to cost and, and tell us that we're spending more than we should on it. But you think there are other uh, roles that economists can play in actually improving health care? I think so. I mean, the... It's, it's very easy to associate economics with, with the idea of money, but really um, economics is, is a social science. Finance is about money. Economics is about how people behave. And uh, so, so my interests really are not so much in whether costs are going up or interest rates. I mean, those are important issues, but uh, it's also important to understand how people react and respond to different incentives uh, and the situations around them. In that sense, economics is uh, not, it sort of needs to uh, incorporate other social sciences as well, like psychology. We'll and that's come, actually we'll come back and talk yeah. more about uh, economics, healthcare, and disability right after we take a break here. I want to ask all of you to, to stay tuned, and, and we'll be right back with more Focus on Abilities. Welcome back to Focus on Abilities. I'm Lex Frieden, your host, and we're here with three uh, students, one postdoctoral uh, student and two students, one from Rice and one from Baylor University here. And uh, we're talking about a summer experience uh, that uh, involves an internship, both at the University of Texas Health Science Center and at the ILRU program at Tier Memorial Hermann. So Daphne, you, were, um, uh, you came here from Baylor for the summer 
uh, you were, had a sponsored internship, which was really nice. And what did you expect to be doing when you got here? Um, well, I knew that the internship had to relate to cancer uh, in some way, and it was marketed kind of as a public health internship. So I really thought I would be doing more community outreach, um, maybe going out to different groups and passing out flyers or different things. So I really wasn't sure exactly what to expect. And as it turns out, what did you wind up doing? Well, I actually winded up working on a project uh, that actually has a lot to do with disabilities. Uh, before this experience, I never really thought of disabilities in the context of cancer, uh, but I've learned, I mean, within the first few hours of, of working, I learned that you know cancer patients, as, as a result of treatment, or surgeries or things from the cancer, they you know have a lot of I guess battle wounds I would call them from the treatment. Even though they're survivors, you know when I think of a survivor, I think of Lance Armstrong, you know, out on the Tour de France. And so I never really thought of them, um, you know, as having a disability. Um, but I learned quickly that you know even though they're cancer survivors, sometimes there are still scars from that. And so that that was a really big uh, eye-opening experience for me. Well, you also had the opportunity to visit some groups and help to educate about uh, disability and, and about individual rights, right? A little bit, yeah. I actually went out to distribute a survey regarding the um, employment experiences of cancer survivors, and so I went to a couple of groups and just heard back from some people about uh, their experiences if, you know, once they were diagnosed with cancer, if they had any adverse experiences, you know, from their employers or coworkers. So that was really enlightening. Yeah, one lady you met, I recall, had was a school teacher, and while she uh, was being treated for cancer, they changed her job. Yeah, well, they uh, once she was diagnosed, uh, she was able to take leave. They had a policy that she could take up to 30 days of leave, and that other teachers could donate leave for her. So you know that leave ended up running into the end of the school year. So when she got back, she would have still had a week or so. And they changed the policy on her, I guess, in the summer. And they said, well, no, you have to at least come back to work for at least one day to get your leave. So she came back. She was on chemotherapy, so she was really sick. And so they said, well, you know, you didn't really work enough, so you won't be able to get that leave. And then actually, you know, you're too sick to work, so don't come back. And they wouldn't let her coworkers donate leave or anything. So that was just really, uh, to me, that was crazy. I was just like, wow, you know, I didn't realize. And then she actually, the chemo worked. She recovered, and, and, and uh, she still couldn't get that job back. Well, she's back working for the school district again, not in the same uh, position, but I mean, she was able to get a job, but that, that whole experience I know was, was stressful for her. It must have been and traumatic, not only for her, but probably also for her family. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, we Young, you, you're, uh, you weren't really inclined to, to do community public health kinds of things, your studies in, in economics, uh, but what have you done? Uh, the main project I've been working on this summer is a paper on the reintegration of cancer survivors into the workforce. And so what I did mainly in this paper was to establish the motivation for why this is a, an issue uh, and the th research that has been done about it and what we might do moving forward to, to tackle this issue. So the, the real issue relates to, to Daphne's experience with this woman. Uh, many cancer survivors have difficulties getting back into the workforce mm -hmm. and integrating back into the community in other ways as well and from an economic standpoint that has a as an impact right uh, definitely I mean if you think about it it uh, there's a certain stigma associated with cancer um, people and I'm not without reason because it can be a debilitating disease and so after going through his treatment and everything, um, it's natural that employees have concerns about an employee's productivity. So the, I guess the questions we need to ask are whether we can, is there a way uh, maybe a, with some low cost intervention that we can help them reintegrate back to society because Cancer imposes certain costs on, uh, it might be on the person, it might be on his insurance company, or it might be on the government through government insurance. But if we can get them 
back into the workforce and being productive again, then that is definitely uh, better for the general health of the economy. Well, it's, I mean, we should apply, it seems to me, what we've learned about disability generally. Uh, people, regardless of the extent or type of disability they have, mm -hmm probably have capacities, they have abilities. It's just finding the right match for people uh, to enable them to do productive work, right? Yeah, and especially with, if we are talking about uh, jobs where, it, I mean, we're talking about an economy where service and knowledge intensive jobs are, are like a, a very important part driving it. So. You know, if it's possible to let someone work from home or to work more flexible hours, then that's definitely, especially, and especially now with things with like the internet and we have such good communications technology, uh, I think that's definitely something that we need to start looking into. Dr. Elms, you've had personal experience um, trying to get back into the school and eventually into the workforce uh, given the challenges of a significant disability and you've also as a physician worked with patients who face these challenges uh, do you feel like there's a, a better awareness on the part of the public and employers now than there might have been 20 years ago yes i, I think that's definitely true i think um, particularly i guess since uh, since the ada 1990 a lot a lot of uh, progress has been made i think also there is quite a bit yet to be done. I think, I think still there, I guess there will be a lot of employers and individuals who will have um, preconceived ideas and will kind of judge people on uh, superficial things. And I think often, I guess, people with disabilities have to prove themselves and whatnot um, before they can get, you know, recognition and, and uh, that, you know, they can make a meaningful contribution to society and to the workforce. So. Um, certainly, I think a lot of great things have been done. Uh, there's a lot of great advocacy groups. Um, independent Living Research Realization certainly has been doing amazing things. And that's something that I was never really exposed to in medical school. I mean, you have some courses on ethics and whatnot, but you really don't see too much of the um, support systems that are in place or the advocacy groups. Well, I guess rehabilitation is a different kind of uh, clinical approach and uh, one of the things that we learn in rehabilitation is that it's a process uh, and so for these cancer survivors that uh, we young and Daphne have been working with and whom they are interested uh, sometimes I guess we hear the word survivor and and we do as Daphne did with respect to her reference to Lance Armstrong we think well it's cured and they can go on about business and do anything they might have done, but in fact, rehabilitation means that they have to work through, and Lance Armstrong did too, but it, fortunately, the type of cancer he had and the recovery that he had enabled him to succeed at the job he had before he had the cancer. Other people may be affected differently, right? Yes. Um, rehabilitative medicine, I guess, certainly, if you want to talk about independent living or quality of life, certainly that's a huge part of that. And, some branches of medicine deal with, I guess, you know, saving lives or different issues. But when you're talking about, I guess, particularly, I guess, an aging population, uh, certainly quality of life is is going to be the biggest issue to try to uh, try to improve upon. That's an important point. Uh, we're nearing the end of our program, but I wanted, before we go, to... Uh, ask each of you what, uh, if you had to pick one or maybe two things that you learned or experiences that you had this summer, what would be the most interesting ones to you on reflection now? Uh, we Young, what would you say? Uh, I think there are two main things. The first one is, was, that, was the process of actually writing that paper. Um, I've actually read somewhere or heard somewhere from an academic that the best way to learn about an issue is to write a paper about it. And I found that to be very true because not only have I had to read up and learn a lot about in terms of knowledge, but I've also had to think about it and put everything together. And I think the second thing that I really took away from this experience was my was uh, actually going to ILRU and working with people there because 
many of the staff at ILRU have uh, dis disabilities, but I've never felt, I never gone there and felt like, oh, I felt sorry for them, you know. They, they're like the happiest people. They are so um, enthusiastic about what they do, and that's very, very inspiring to me. Okay, Daphne, your experience? Yeah, I would just say, you know, based on what I've learned, I've learned so much about cancer survivors and this, uh, the population with people with disabilities. And I would just say, you know, um, yeah, you know, maybe they're not like Lance Armstrong or what I thought, but then, you know, people still, you know, are able to do so many different things. So even though, yeah, they may have a disability, like that doesn't mean they can't, you know, do anything. So just to, to remember to, to keep that in mind uh, when, when meeting people and reading about different situations. Okay. And Dr. Elms, your, your summer will never end. You're, you'll be here uh, much longer as a postdoctoral fellow, and we look forward to working with you and, and uh, supporting you in, in your endeavor, your goal to uh, achieve uh, uh, specialty certification. So good luck to you. Thank you very much for having me. I'd okay. just like to say that it's been an amazing opportunity uh, for me. And I think when you go through, like I said, medical school, you just see all the clinical aspects, but it's just really a tiny uh, uh, portion of what uh, the medical field can, can do for people when I've seen all the advocacy. and. Well, speaking on behalf of the University of Texas Health Science Center and Tier Memorial Herman, I, we've appreciated having all of you as uh, interns and postdoc and we hope you will uh, succeed in your studies and maybe come back in a professional capacity later on in your careers. I want to thank all of you for watching Focus on Abilities. This has been an interesting show for me and I'm sure it has been for you. At the beginning of the program we asked who was the chief senate sponsor of the Americans with Disabilities Act and those of you who've been researching it already know it was uh, Senator Harkin. Senator Tom Harkin from Iowa, who was the chief Senate sponsor of the Rehabilitation, uh, the Americans with Disabilities Act of 1990. So uh, I'm Lex Frieden. I've enjoyed hosting this program. I hope you'll tune in next time. And I want to thank, before we leave, HTV for putting Focus on Abilities on the air. Please join us again next time.